He had to learn. All right, y'all. I don't know if y'all just heard that, but this uh, our favorite character, Charleston White. And uh, he's sitting down talking to a uh, sister named Priscilla, uh, Priscilla Clark. And um, they might be getting, they're going to get into a little heated debate, I guess. But uh, I disagree with her. A little bit I heard of her. And I disagree. You know, y'all know my feelings about Charleston, right? <laughs> y'all already know my thing about Charleston, man. Charleston, Charleston is a, a dude I really uh would not like to see and I, and I don't have no problem with charleston i don't hate him or anything like that but i definitely don't want him in front of kids you know what i'm saying these guys who come out here and say yeah i talk to kids and then they say all this crazy uh outlandish stuff we cannot have you in front of the kids at you as we, we might as well have uh, strippers in front of the kids right drag queens in front of the kids you know what i'm saying uh uh uh, uh nudists in front of the kids Right, we might as well have people that's off the hook in front of the kids, right? No, 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 no. Anyway, anyway, y'all know I'm y'all know my position on Charleston, but now he got somebody who's uh, I don't want to say equally yoked, but uh, has uh, a commensary uh, uh, bastion of bad advice to put out there as well. So let's take a listen, y'all. Let's take a listen. Uh, and, and, and where do most boys learn how to treat a woman? The feminine energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm everything that she described, but I, I had a mother who, who tried and, and thought that she could raise boys on her own till we started getting in trouble as a teenager. Now she want to go try to get the other kind of man, but by this time, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I, I get it. Uh, I didn't think it was going to go like this, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay. All right. See, I can already tell that we are cooking up some real goodness tonight. So let's take it over here to Miss Princella. Can you please go ahead and just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're bringing? All right. Well, uh, I'm Princella. They call me the queen maker. Some people call me, a lot of people call me Pastor P, maybe because of the power in my voice, but I'm a woman's advocate and uh, social reformer. And uh, I have a background in cell and molecular biology. I got commissioned as an officer in the Army. I, I've written two or well, three books. I was top salesman in the car industry, cell phone industry, direct marketing industry. So I've been out there. And a lot of people look at me and they, they take me wrong because they try to um, analyze me and put me in a box up and and label me or compare me to social standards. But what they don't realize is I have lived a life on my own, right? I grew up, I had a, I was in a abusive home and I lived in a family where I was the quote unquote black sheep and I was not the favorite. And some of the things that happened, you know, my grandmother used to put me and my brother out on the streets and wouldn't feed us all day while she fed my other uh, cousins she would we got treated really bad and so throughout life I had to figure things out on my own I was always on my own so people talk about me but it's like okay well all right y'all sorry about all these interruptions all right let's continue with the sister and uh what she's been going through As a girl jumping from house to house, living on the streets, was I supposed to get it out the mud and depend on myself, or was I supposed to run up to a man and ask him to help me in a situation like that, right? Because, see, that's how you get pimped. That's how girls get pimped. That ain't me. So by going through these experiences in life, I gained a knowledge and a wisdom. And so with my background in cell and molecular biology, I learned how to analyze and process information by uh, observation and critical thinking and facts. It's called qualitative studies. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. with yeah. that, yeah, so cell It's called qualitative studies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man, Charles, be quiet. <laughs> molecular biology did that. Then being spending eight years in the military and going through officer candidate school and um, ordinance uh, to be, become an ordinance officer, 
I learned how to lead. So not only do I know how to lead myself, I know how to lead others, but I also know how to see if somebody else is capable of leadership or not. Then with my studies, well, with um, being a top salesman in the car industry, working around men, that is a male-dominated industry, this is about as snake as you can get if you ain't do doing dope and stuff like that. That's about as snake as you can get. I'm dealing with males. I'm succeeding in this rough hardcore industry, right? I learned firsthand in the field human behavior and human psychology. And by me being a tomboy and, and, and most of my friends being males, I have gathered a wide variety of p information that I've been able to piece together to give a whole picture. So not only do I have leadership, science, I have philosophy, philosophy under my belt, ecology, I have political science, I have uh, sociology, psychology, human behavior, I have all of these subjects under my belt to back up everything that I say. And what I found out is that this world is 180 degrees upside down on its head. And in order for this world to be better, you have to put women back in charge. Because... Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> you have to put women in charge of the world for it to be better. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, y'all heard her first claim. That's her first claim. Now, I wanted her to say all of her, uh, you know, give out all of her um, accolades so she could, you know, show you if she... We can, we can, you guys can judge for yourself if she's qualified to, um, for us to, uh, you know, take in her assessments, right? Is she qualified? According to her, she has, she's very qualified. So let's see. But she just said that women should uh, be in leadership over the world. Now, I disagree with that. I think women can help out in leadership. I think they can be very instrumental in leadership and they're needed in the leadership. But I think ultimately you need a man that's there. Men are made to sacrifice. They're made to sacrifice. And so uh, I don't think women are made to sacrifice. They can. I mean, when I say sacrifice, I mean willing to lay down their lives for principles. Now, most women are not willing to lay down their life for a principle. They're willing to lay down their life for their children and their family, and that's good. That's the sacrifice they're willing to make. But most women are not willing to lay down their life for a principle where a man, more men are willing to lay down their life for principles, for an ideology, for an idea, for a, a, a thinking process knowing that they'll never see the fruition of it, but if their death is going to get the ball rolling, they're willing to do it, whereas I don't think as many women, as, not as many women is willing to do that as a man. Anyway, but this is what she's saying. Okay, so let's move on. Without women knowing better so that they can do better, we will not have a functioning society and we will not have a planet that is viable for us to live as humans. So I'm here to empower the woman, period. Amen. I think that is good. Now, this is a, I think empowering women is good and that's good. But <coughs> ultimately, we have to get black. We have to get black men back. We have to get black men back into their right minds because a good black man. A good black woman is worth twice her weight in gold, 10 times her weight in gold. Let me say, a good black woman is worth 10 times her weight in gold. A good black man is worth 100,000 times his weight in gold. 100,000 times. So we need both good black women and good black men to change this thing around. Why do you just say black men and black women? Because that's the 
That's the, the demographic I'm talking to. If I was talking to white people, I would be telling them what they need to do, right? <laughs> but that, that I'm the, I'm, there's plenty of people out there to tell white people what they need to do, right? Shout out to the white people. But that is, I'm talking to uh, black people at this point because we have a serious problem. We have serious problems in the black community, one of which is a lack of men, real men. We have a lack of real men. We got males, but we don't have men, right? Uh, men are willing, are committed to principles, whereas uh, males are committed to their desires. All right, let's continue. Let's continue, y'all. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Princella. Well, there you have it. I wanted you guys to get to know who these people are, and now we're going to jump right in. So I've been doing a lot of research on both of you guys, and I have some questions prepared. But well, we're going to free flow because you guys have a lot to offer and a lot, a lot of knowledge to offer. And yeah, she's an expert. Yeah, yeah, she's an expert. Yeah, I got these motherfucking skinny jeans on. They fucking with me with these tight drawers. I'm going yeah. back to baggy jeans. I'm yeah. sick of these. Wait a minute. Skinny jeans? <sighs> I can even, man. I don't see how y'all can walk in them skinny jeans, man. But uh, shout out to Charleston, man. Shout out to Charleston, man. He, you know, he say he's a, he's a skinny jeans man, but now he say he's going back to baggy. Got to, man. You got to have some room, man. Got to have some room in there, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't see how you can even be in them skinny jeans, but that's that's a whole other conversation. Okay, let's let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now nah, she's an expert, though. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what she described her, herself as a person uh, who goes to college, right? Uh, the college just gets you the degree, but that's why they want you to do an internship, right? Mm -hmm. The internship is going to give you the qualitative experiences to matches the, the the quantitative, the data and the knowledge you done got. Mm -hmm. uh, so when she says, "I was a tomboy," "I was in the military," "I was I was in 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 in, in, in selling sales and cars," uh, that's that's probably one of the most dominated male industries out there as a career choice for a woman and to be a top salesman. Uh, so she had the barriers, she had the ideology, so she had to fight against everything. So uh, she like a, she like a, I'm sitting here listening to her, she's like a gay, gay male who were raised around all his aunties and aunts and things and know everything about a woman. Wait a minute, Charleston, did you just call her gay, a gay male? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> this man is absolutely something else, man. Now he's insulting this lady, right? On the low. He insulting her on the low, right? But the lady, I think she's smart enough to catch what's going on. But uh Charleston man is just one of them kind of dudes, man, that really um You got to see it to believe it, man. You got to see it to believe it. You don't think somebody is this silly until you actually see them talking out their own mouth right all right let's continue with charleston so he can go out and mm -hmm. beat it so she didn't mm -hmm. try to become a man yeah she looked kind of tongue but she didn't become a man she just soaked up all this knowledge and mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. she can really teach mm -hmm. so uh I, I i i understand now because I, I i had no knowledge of who she was what what i just seen her on fresh and fit and i said yeah that's my partner way she <laughs> had to suck her ass nigga. so this my first to get to hear what she is and what she's done so mm -hmm. And I think it's definitely a recipe for magic tonight. Um, the fact that you guys come from what, what we would think is such different places, but then through your life experiences, because you both have so many different life experiences and so many things that you've been through, and it's brought you to this place where it seems like of agreeing. So it's going to be really exciting to kind of dive into that. Mm -hmm. So, Prince I want to go into a little bit about your book. You know, yes. you've written some books. Mm -hmm. um, the one that we're going to be talking about today is The Game, 41 Shades of Men. Please check it out if you haven't had a chance to. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a little bit of question about something that you mentioned in the book. Mm -hmm. There's something that you have a uh, name that's called the push, pull, beg, and plead method. Yes. So can you please define that, explain it, and, um, and tell us how, how that's counterproductive for women. Okay. So in order to, to create a society that functions the way we do, you have to create resistance, right? Because through creating resistance and doing a backflow of energy, you create a whole host of problems that you can be an individual to create a solution for. So it's, and, and so feed people poison, make them sick, bam, I got the solution, right? 
create a whole host of issues by creating a backflow of energy and then you create a solution to the problem. So the, how women believe about men is that men are leaders, they're providers and protectors, and that they are- Why does she are, keep touching her? That you are special- Why does she gotta keep touching this lady? You. So this is the belief, the, the subconscious belief that's deeply ingrained in women yes. that motivates them because men can't stop being She men. keep touching this lady, the right? Of I'm like, I keep, man, the I, keep, I keep saying this. Why is this lady touching her? I feel like I'm in church. I feel like I'm in church. Look to your neighbor and say, amen. Amen. Reach over and shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm glad God is in my life. Glad God is in my life. Pat your neighbor on the back and say, the devil's a lie. <laughs> All right, I missed something real quick, man, because I was like, why is he telling That was weird to me. All right, let's continue. Leaders, they're providers and protectors, and that they are, that you are special if they give their love to you. Mm. So this is the belief, the, the subconscious belief that's deeply ingrained in women yes. that motivates them because men can't stop being men. The you nature can't. of a male, I keep saying that. the nature of a male, he, if you know anything about the occult or esoteric information, you have a, you have three planes. You have a physical plane, mental plane, and a spiritual plane. And the law of gender or the principle of gender is masculine and feminine energy. On the, ma on the material plane, you have a masculine and feminine counterpart. The male body is the masculine counterpart on a three-dimensional plane. That means as a masculine vessel, he still operates on the masculine principle. And what is the masculine principle? The masculine principle is a moving energy. It moves, it does. It's not a still energy. Mm -hmm. So women believe that they can stop men. That they can Why you always men. moving? Why you yeah. gonna be still? They, yeah. They think that they yeah, can yeah, make yeah, males. Yeah, yeah. So they believe, they try to use quote unquote love as a power tactic to manipulate the male to sit still. Come so, on, how? sit down boy, be beg, still, y'all quit that. So the beg, plead, push and pull method is the method that women use to try to convince men to do what she want him to do. Give Shaming tactics. Emotions, be monogamous, do all of this, which is totally counterproductive because it'll, it'll never work, mm -hmm. right? And so in order to fix the problem, you change the flow of the energy and you go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Women do not want to go with the flow of males because they do not understand the psychology, the nature, or the makeup of a male. Mm -hmm. And so they cause themselves problems trying to push, pull, beg, and plead for him to emotionally connect with her. For him to, uh, to, to, to be monogamous and all this stuff, which the male is incapable of doing because it goes in direct opposition of it. his nature. Okay, that's just, this is strike two. Males are incapable of monogamy. That's strike number two. <laughs> uh, Clarence, Clarence, men are incapable of monogamy. Women are too. <laughs> We're not incapable. Let me say this. Monogamy is not inherent in us, men or women. Right, we have to be taught monogamy. We have to be taught that, right? Uh, you know, monogamy is not inherent in a woman, right? And monogamy is not inherent in a man. Clarence, you know, women is women supposed to be this way? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You know what I mean? A woman can play games just like a man can play games, right? What they song say? Women as players too. The days when you thought that women were, you know, uh, sugar and spice and everything nice, those days are over. Those days are over. And some of these women out here, man, they are just as low down as some of the men. So uh, I just don't want us to separate and say, well, men are have these things. Men are just these outliers that need to be dealt with. No, women are too. So, but men have certain roles in society, and women have certain roles in society. And if you don't want to live with those roles, 
then hey, you can you don't have to be in the society. You can go live in another society. But anyway, that's strike two. Men are incapable of monogamy, which we know that's a lie, right? Okay. I'd like to give you a chance to respond to that. Man, shit. Oh. What man? I she just um, that's it. I'm, uh, <laughs> man, that's, the man, the 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 boy been a fuck up from day one, yeah. right? Uh, we we man, she broke us down. That energy <laughs> can't sit still. That's why, that's why he that's why he fucked up. If his mama saying, "Be still, right. sit down, y'all quit making that noise," and he never get to go outside to get that energy out. Mm -hmm. That's why when he go to school mm -hmm. and he don't get to go to recess, right. that energy cannot sit still. Right. right. So she broke down the whole makeup of us. This energy has to eat and it has to fuck. That's his, that's the yep. desires that's of this energy. Yeah. So when a nigga go get a job, the job is for food and sex. Yep. That's it. The, the woman is for food and sex. Yeah. She has other traits, but if he's not capable and he don't have the energy to identify the traits outside of her cooking and fucking, then all he'll use her for is that. He can't do nothing else. And, and he so, cannot not be a man. And that's why people fight me when I say men are incapable of love. They fight me, but he just said it. They can't do it. Here's why. Holy smokes, y'all. I think we did. I think we found somebody who is a, uh, it may not be as intelligent. I mean, they may not be as vulgar as Charleston, but they're definitely about as intelligent, right? <laughs> she said men are incapable of love, and now she's about to tell us why. Okay, here we go. Because men live in a perpetual state of scarcity, sex is something that they cannot control can't they can't every that's strike number three is that three or four that's four strike number four men are incapable of controlling their sexual uh uh behavior oh man not looking good for priscilla right when you're putting yourself when when charleston white is agreeing with you mm, not looking good. Not looking good. But I think these two are going to act ultimately have a uh, conflict at some point. We're gonna we're gonna kind of scoot up to that point. But uh, yeah, man. So just uh, give me a minute. Every twenty seconds or a minute, sex is going through their mind. It takes so much energy just for the male to control his thoughts and stay focused. That's why they go find yeah. God. That's why they have to they get have that to religion. Find God. They, they need to. religion. That's, religion is they, not for women. It is for, it's for men. men. Did you, oh, shit. She said women, religion is not for women. It's for men. Wow. Wow. And Charleston agreed with her. I would, if Charleston was agreeing with me, man, I would really check what I was saying, man. <laughs> I'd really check what I was saying if I was, if, 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 if I looked around and Charleston White was like, yeah, Clarence, you're right. I'd be like, uh oh. <laughs> and what is going on? What is going on? Am I, am I, am I really on the right page here? What is going on? Yikes. But they're in agreement right now. Okay. I think I heard enough of uh, her. So we're going we're gonna to try to skip to where they had the conflict. Uh, hold on, y'all. Hold on tight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's about, to ask, it's, it's about to get a little uncomfortable here. She's about to ask Charleston about some of the stuff that's been happening on uh, these YouTube screets. Well, all right, so buckle up, everybody. Here we go. So much for, for that uh, knowledge. I want to kind of pivot and uh, take it to the headlines mm -hmm. of the YouTube streets. As you know, you guys have lots of content and things going on. 
Charleston, now you know I got to go into this, and you know I got to ask you about one of the biggest headlines you see whenever you Google or YouTube or anything about Charleston White. What we see, we see raping and beating. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got to ask you a little bit about that. You the first person ever asked me too. Yeah, I, I, I would yeah. like to ask you about that. I have seen um, you know, a couple of videos of you making some comments. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you know what it is I'm referring to. So yeah. I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and um, let us know what, what's that all about. Uh, I've never been charged with rape. Uh, I've never been charged with beating a woman. Uh, I've never been accused of it. Uh, I've never been in no domestic violence relationships. That, see, now, hold on. I've never been charged. I've never been accused. That don't mean you ain't done it. <laughs> that don't mean you ain't done it. See, see, these dudes are slick. See, what they won't say is, I've never done that. I've never threatened to do that. I've ne he ain't saying that, is he? He's saying, I ain't never been charged, right? That's like a bank robber. I ain't never been caught. I ain't never been charged with a bank robber. That's because you got away with it for so long, right? <laughs> but see, to the unthinking black person, this he, oh, he ain't never been charged. Well, he must have never done it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. He just ain't never been charged with it. That don't mean he ain't never done it, right? All right, so let's continue. Don't don't let the wordplay catch you up. Uh, that was my way uh, of wanting to come to the internet and say I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm the baddest nigga in America. That was gonna be my claim to fame. Uh, it was more in defense of Bill Cosby. Uh, so I started doing that right at the time Bill Cosby do it. I wanted to be the only nigga in America that, and then I was mad at the white people in the city. So I was getting into it with all the white. Uh, I Man, yeah, I was going. I was getting into it with my local politicians. Mm -hmm. So I would come into the internet saying some of the most horrific things, uh, and I'm going radical at the time. So I was coming to the internet to come go against white people. The same shit that they said at the t at the time. We talking about a couple, about like a month ago, right? <laughs> this is stuff you said. Hey, Charleston, maybe two or three months ago. Remember, you said you was gonna arp a. Uh, uh, you was gonna arp uh, the, the 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 other the, the uh, I forgot Matt Hop Matt Hopper's daughters, remember that? You gonna arp her? Annually, annually, annually arp them? How about that? That was not too long ago. <laughs> that wasn't when you first got on the internet. That was a couple months ago. <laughs> you said all Asian kids should die. All Asians should die. You said they go into hell just like the gays. You said you said the Asians are going to hell just like the gays. Am I lying? Am I lying? That's exactly what he said, right? <laughs> uh, he was deaf on all Asians. He wished that uh, Math Hopper's uh, daughters would get arped and molested. Am I lying? This came out of his mouth. <laughs> and it was this was a couple months ago. Some of this stuff was like not even a, not even a couple months, like a month ago. This dude is a lunatic. Absolute lunatic, man. I don't know who, something must be wrong in the state of Texas where they got this dude talking to kids. What the hell is going on in Texas? This, they got this loony bird out there talking to kids. I, I just, I have no understanding for that. But anyway, let's get back to Charleston, man. Our favorite character, the hick. <laughs> the black women the same thing that we say in rap music i want to say to white people online i, I served time for killing the white man so i can't oh oh no you didn't no you didn't let's stop that lie right there you did not serve time for killing a white man you said yourself you wasn't the one with the gun nor were you the one that pulled the trigger you said you were just simply sitting in the vehicle when someone pulled the gun out and killed the white man. You were you were simply with the group. This is what Charleston said itself. Now you coming up here saying you did time for killing a white man. You did not kill nobody. So stop lying. Just say, hey, you know what? I went to jail for being with the with the group of people that did it. He didn't kill nobody. I'm not saying he can't kill nobody, but he sure he didn't that's not why he was in jail. He was in jail. Excuse me. 
for being at the scene and be, being a party to the the, com- the the commission of the crime. He know he was he wasn't the one with the gun, nor was he the one to pull the trigger, according to his own words. If you hear him go out and describe that situation, he'll tell you straight out he wasn't the one that did that. He wasn't the one that actually pulled the trigger. Uh, but I guess you can go on some people don't double check. See what don't people don't go back and fact check this dude, right? Probably I'm probably one of the only people that go back and fact check this cat. And I know based on his own words, he did not kill no one. He was simply at the scene. He was one of four black men, black young black men that was at the scene. And he said himself, he wasn't the one that pulled the trigger. He said that himself. All right, let's get back. To, let's get back to our favorite character. Came out bragging about, yeah, I'm the only nigga I know ever done time for killing the white man. Nigga, we stood over the white man and watched him die. Well, I didn't run. I wanted to see what a white man looked like dying, just like in the movies, right? So, uh, what- see how people try to make sh- try to make shit out to be like he was. Just, he's just killer, right? But some of us know your backstory, brother. Some of us know your backstory. Just tell the truth, man. I mean, you, shit, you're going to get credit for just for doing the time anyway. You ain't got to lie and say you was, yeah, yeah you. I just, I, see, one lie builds on top of another lie. I shot, I did time for killing the white man. You did not do time for killing nobody. You didn't. Did time because you was at the scene. Not You didn't kill nobody. That's why you out here on the on the bricks now. The man that you said killed somebody is in there now. Did you, is is you the one that did it? Then own up to it and go take your ass back to jail. But you're telling two different stories, right? You saying this man, you said that you told on the kid that and that kid's still in jail. He's doing life in prison because of you. Because you went and told that he he's the one that pulled the trigger. Some of us know. Some of us know your backstory, brother. You know. So, and and how do we know it? Because you told it. I wouldn't know this stuff unless I heard you tell you say it on another platform, where you went into detail about it. So, ain't me. I ain't have to dig up no records and dox you and none of that. You came out here and said it. Anyway. Well, the internet's out. You ain't never killed nobody. I said, oh, okay, but well, nigga, I got away raping white bitches. Well, when I broke it down, we were raping. Oh, I forgot. I forgot about arping the white girls, running trains on the white girls and arping them against their will. I, I forgot about that one. Okay, all right. As kids, I got locked up at 14 years old. I got out at 21 years old. Where's a rape case at? Where was a nigga raping? And I'm telling you, when we was kids, nigga, we were fucking 11, 12 years old. How you, what you think we were doing? You think we knew how to properly have sex? No, we were running trains from the ideologies of the music. Hey, we want some pussy. Mm -hmm. Me and my homies like to play this game. But there's a part that says every time it gets to me, I was shit out of luck because I stick my dick in and it. All right. Will get stuck. Mm-hmm. The girl will say, stop. I say I'm not. So at this time, when I'm making these videos, I'm actually working on children rape cases. Mm-hmm. Boys who run in trains, you know, recording it. Mm-hmm. The girl. So uh, I was teaching from. A, from. You're working on rape cases. What are, what are you doing? Anybody out there? Anybody out there, listen to me. You do not want Charleston White working on your ARP case. You got to be in a hell of a bad situation to have Charleston White be your advocate. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, man. Charleston White come comes to your uh, cell. No, take Charleston. You can help me by going to get me somebody else, right? <laughs> 
from a standpoint. Uh, and I use vulgar, vul vulgarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, no, nah, I ain't never done it. I ain't never been accused of it. Uh, but I was talking about white women. So and, and I'm not, like, oh, okay, okay. I'm just talking about white women, so that makes it okay. See, talking about arping white women, that's okay. That's that's okay. <laughs> people told Minister Farcon, they say, "Hey, I only rob white. I only I only steal from white people." And Mr. Farcon told him, "Brother, stealing is stealing. You know, eventually, black people will get to you. Will get to black people eventually, right? <laughs> so stealing is stealing. Arping is arping. Sooner or later." You get to black people if you if you okay with arping anybody of any color, you arping them. Eventually, everybody's gonna be you gonna be open it. You gonna open up your uh, expand your horizons, as they say, right? But I want you to hear how foolish this young man is. Man, uh, well, I chose satire and shock jocking. Mm. So 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 yes, which I, what wh okay so which time was you telling the truth? Are you telling the truth now where you say you never did it, or was you telling the truth on the other videos where you was talking about it and described in detail when and you put people's names out there that you was saying you was you guys was out there arping people? Which one is it? Which time are you telling the truth? Which time are you lying? See, man, this is <laughs> this is why. You got to watch who you listen to, man. You got to watch who you listen to because you listen to the wrong person, man. You get caught up like this. Like Priscilla, uh, man, I went, to, I went to college and I studied what satire was, what a shock jock was to do in public speakings. Uh, man, I wanted to be mean to white people. I didn't give a fuck about it. Yeah, 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 I don't rape white. And I went downtown. I went downtown, too. And said the same thing. I can't wait till we start raping white bitches. Like, so, but I'm taking everything to what the rapper said and taking everything back to slavery. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. White people. But I ain't seen no nigga that, that had the heart to do that. And I wanted to be that nigga that'll be brave enough to go say, yeah, I done raped some white women. And I knew by me saying all these horrible things, it's going to make people look. This is who the kids of Texas got on their side. This man thought it would be a great idea to run around saying, I'm, raping, I'm out here arping white women. This is an advocate for the kids in Texas. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, Texas, man, what is wrong with you, Texas? And I put it out there before. Willie D, where you at? This dude is in your backyard, Willie D. You gonna let him run around saying he gonna arp white women or arp? Excuse me, arp. Now he talking about he arping black women. He saying he threatening to arp black girls, prepubescent girls. That ain't enough to get on your radar, Willie D. That ain't enough to get on your radar, Willie D. You want to bring Boyce Watkins and who was you trying to bring together? Boyce Watkins and whoever whoever you was trying to bring together. Hey, you got a man in your backyard, man, going out there destroying the kids in Texas, especially the low-income kids. You think white people are going to let Charleston White come and sit down and talk to their kids? You crazy? They're going to let them talk to your no-good, thieving, arping black kids. So they think, right? This dude's a fool and a maniac. Shouldn't be in front of no kids. Let him do his comedy shows and let the people dumb enough to give him twenty, thirty dollars, whatever he charged per seat to come to his uh, uh, quote unquote comedy show. <laughs> let them do that. At least he ain't stealing money from nobody. But talking to kids, no. Oh no, we can't have that. No, 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 no. That that, that we, we no, we can't we can't allow that to take place. Not at all. <laughs> Not Tatar. All right, let's get back to uh, Charleston. And Charleston said, I, I was an arpist. I wasn't an arpist. I was uh, doing this. I wasn't. I was. I am a killer. I ain't a killer. I did. I did. Which one is it, Charleston? Which one is it? You got to get your story straight, brother. All right. <laughs> 
you can't find one accusation, one video. So uh, I wanted to be what the nigga. Accusation? Lord have mercy. Is to white folks, ultimately turning around and have to fight my own people. Because I'm saying, why would black people be offended by me specifically saying white women? And then when I break it down, see, they won't never play the whole video where I break it down and talk about most boys are taught to rape because this is a rape culture. Look at the movies Fifty Shades of Grey. Look at porn. So we are taught this as little boy. Say, come on, nigga, let's run a train on them. We don't know to properly ask for sex. So we're having sex at such an early age. Uh, we're no, you're not taught. You're not taught, Arpin. We weren't taught to Arp. The culture is the, the culture is uh, uh, um, uh, taught to. Uh, to succumb to your desires that discipline is the enemy of good living that's what this society teaches you right disciplining yourself with what you eat disciplining yourself for what you put in your body disciplining yourself for what you put in your brain disciplining yourself for the people that and the energy that you put around yourself disciplining yourself that is that is uh, counterproductive to having fun in this life, having pleasure, because that's what you taught. Pleasure at no expense. That's what you taught in this, in this culture. Pleasure at no expense. There's always an expense to pleasure. There's always an expense. But see, in America, you can have pleasure at no expense. Well, you think you can. They promote it like that. Right. You can have the pleasure of victimizing somebody who cannot retaliate against you. Because if you in a normal situation, if you was to victimize someone, they would they would retaliate against you. See, things would be even. You could the person that you victimize, they could re, them and their family could retaliate against you. But see, when you arp somebody, typically they don't know who the perpetrator is or you're too scared to retaliate. Pleasure at zero expense. That's what the that's what the thinking process is. And of course unfortunately Caucasian societies uh for thousands and thousands of years have tried to have um pleasure minus the responsibility minus the sacrifice minus the duty and discipline that goes with it and unfortunately they came up with several different ways of trying to do that of experimenting on trying to do that including violating people but not limited to violating people and violating animals and violating little kids but we'll get into that later that's another conversation we listening to charleston charleston said hey look i did all this I, I said all this bad stuff but it's not me it's not my fault it's the rappers go blame them for what i said right it's not me it's slavery go back go blame slavery for me saying what i'm saying i'm gonna give them a little credit for that one i'm gonna give them a little credit for that one but not a lot because you're your own man you're your own man and violating somebody is violating somebody. Right? A violation is a violation. People say sometimes to me, Clance, because I, I have been known to say, what can you do with a slave master? What else is there to do but lop his head off? There's nothing else you can do. He's not going to change. He's not going to, if he gets it free, he's going to go out and try to enslave other people. His head, his head should roll. And people say, oh, Clarence, that's, that's so, uh, you know, aggressive that you feel that way. I said, it's, not, it's not aggressive. It's not. I don't care what the color of the slave is. I'm not limited to black people, black slaves, and I'm not limited to a white slave owner. Why do you think there's an Ar Irish Republican army out there?
<laughs> because white people was enslaving white people. And the Irish said, man, if these English people going to try to keep slaving us, enslaving us, let's lop their effing heads off. Right? Because you can take one and you let that one go, he's going to go get reinforcements and come back. No, you got to go, buddy. I don't care what color the slave master is and what color the slave is. The only thing you can do, ask the Irish, <laughs> ask the Scottish. The only thing you can do with somebody with their head with, with, that's a, that wants to make you a slave, whoop. <laughs> but we are now are in the best time as far as opportunities to take advantage of where we're at in this society. This is the best situation we've been in since we've been here as far as having the, uh, having access to knowledge, access to information, which we didn't have for 400 years. Now we got access to a lot of information. It's up to us to have the discipline to apply it when necessary. So can't blame everything on the rappers. Oh, the rappers that said this and said that. Oh, okay, so we all got to be what the rappers say. No, we don't. But that's another conversation. Let's get back to our favorite character. We're taught to get the girl drunk. That's rape in real life. Yeah. Coercion for sex is rape. So we're taught all this as a boy. I'm a man saying this what we did as kids, homie, and we really were raping. But we moved into the white people neighborhoods doing this. Oh, well, that makes we it okay. <laughs> oh, well, that makes it okay. You just harping white people. That makes it okay, right? <laughs> that makes it okay, Charleston. <laughs> oh, boy. Dude is really an idiot. She like me. But everybody go fuck. Just how we do. These niggas just don't want to admit it. I came to the minute doing what she did, admitting the faults of men. These are the faults of men. Have I ever done it? No. But I act like I have. I act like I didn't kill somebody. I ain't never killed nobody. So oh, well, he, now he just admitted it. was the hypocrisy. I killed the white man. And there's real evidence that I served time for murder. Documentation, you know what they say? Ah, you ain't never killed nobody. I raped white bitches. Yeah, oh yeah, you rape white bitches. How can you believe one and not the other when one has proof and documentation and the other has nothing? So this is what they say. Well, he admitted to it. What fool will admit to rape and they still locking Bill Cosby up from 1969? So, yeah, now, nah, uh, I, I use that. Uh, I don't apologize for it. Uh, yeah, and I'd do it again if I had to start all over. Nice. Prince, I'd like to get a response. Please. Oh, of course. You know, I've been waiting on this because this is this the main thing I want to. This yes. This is the main thing I want to address because one, here's the thing. You know, just as well as we all know about male nature, you ain't got to tell a male to do nothing like that because it's already in his nature. So, as a figure, as a person who has. Okay. Now. She just said, I think this strike six or seven, she just said that arping is in a man's nature. Mm -mm. Dominance is in a man's nature, not arping. I don't want to dominate somebody unless they want to be dominated by me. You feel me? I don't want to dominate someone unless they want to be dominated by me. I don't want to dominate somebody who does not want to be dominated by me because that's the wrong chick for me and I'm the wrong man for her, right? A, a, a good situation is when you as a man, your natural tendency to be dominant is going to be offset by a woman's tendency to receive your dominance and work with it and, and help you help you improve your dominance to where it's seamless it, it's dominance without the aggression you don't have to be aggressive to assert your dominance men have to be men that have to be aggressive to assert their dominance are dealing with the wrong woman but i'll get back to that in a minute let's 
I just wanted to say another strike she got, man. So, man, I thought I was going to be on her side when I first started this thing. <laughs> All right, let's continue. As the intelligence that you have, the, the, the uh, ability to draw people that you have, these dudes looking for you to be their daddy. And you get out here and be like, yeah, I rape white bitches. I rape, I rape. These dudes are waiting on the opportunity to take advantage. And let me tell you something. I, I was hoping they'd yeah. do it to white women. Yeah. When, I, when I said it, I was really yeah. egging niggas yeah. on to go get. <laughs> Just when you think Charles K say nothing dumber than he did the minute before, he says something even stupider than he said before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I gotta, I gotta give him credit for that. At least, at least there is no limitation to the foolishness that this man will uh, espouse. <laughs> White women, because I'm sick. Yeah, nigga, y'all doing yeah. it to the sisters. Yeah. Go do to them white hoes and them messing what y'all do to these sisters. See, that 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 don't work because all these women are women. We under we're under a patriarchal society where women where men are standing on women's neck. So men are running this. This is a system. This is a game between men and men, and all of this stuff is hurting women and the planet by men doing the things that y'all are doing and then we're we're promoting this as a leader you have to be responsible with your words oh uh, i ain't no yeah. motherfucking leader i'm a nigga on the internet trying to get some goddamn money oh uh, yes now nah, uh, you make uh, uh oh i think we just went off the rails ladies and gentlemen i thought we was i thought we was one big happy family but now now I think it just went off the rails when she admonished him for what he did. And now he's saying, I ain't no leader. But I thought you was talking to kids, Charleston. What happened to that? <laughs> now I ain't no leader. So what the F they got you talking to kids for then? <laughs> oh, 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 I was in the juvenile system talking to kids on ARP cases. Uh, that's what I was doing. <laughs> but now now that old girl jammed you up i ain't no leader i'm like charles barkley i'm not no role model you show sure as hell not that's i will give you that i'll give you that you sure as hell not all right let's get back to uh our favorite character make me your leader and you go rape a white bitch fuck you in that white bitch i don't, I don't love all women I don't give a fuck about our women. Nigga, I don't give a fuck if a white, a white bitch come up raped. And at the time, I was really, I was revolutionizing. I was really trying to amp my niggas up. Let's kill white folk. Let's rape white women because I want to do to them what they done to us. I really meant that at the time. <laughs> Look at the host. She like, uh, what did you expect bringing a character like Charleston White into your household? What'd you expect? He gonna leave, you know, doo-doo stains in the seats. <laughs> he gonna leave Jericho juice on the couch. That's the type of dude he is. <laughs> and this chick is like, she's shocked at what he's saying, man. Come on, man. This Charleston White you brought in here, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this ain't uh, Barack Obama, somebody with some class and intelligence, all right? This is uh, Charleston White, <laughs> made to bring, made to leave doo doo stains on your chairs, made made to leave uh, uh, curl activator on your couches, right? <laughs> Holy smokes! All right, I'm I'm looking at this lady's face and I'm just laughing. Oh my god! <laughs> she like I didn't know what he was gonna say. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's, uh, let's get back to it. And I know when the revolution jump off, when the war start, killing and raping is a part of the war. Jesus. That come but, with it. But, you, you, but see, you see what I'm... <laughs> she said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Although, you know, he's got a point that that is true, but... It's not going to be that kind of war, Charleston. It's not going to be that kind of war. By the time it gets to that point, the damage is already going to be done, man. All right, so let's uh, let's continue. Jesus, Jesus. I'm saying, 
This is this shit, ain't yeah, I'm this, with ain't that no, shit. this ain't no this ain't no race. And it's just to get back at white folks. But see, this ain't, black this, ain't, this ain't no race war because guess what? You see how they laughing? You see how when he say let's kill, let's rape, baby, that's what they support. And so women are in danger. All women are in danger. I don't give a damn if it's a white woman, black woman. They all ready to do that shit to you, me, your kids. They don't care about no damn color. Uh oh, here we go. Now, did she qualify it by saying people that in the mentality of Charles, Charleston, excuse me, or did she just say they? Who is the they? See, we got to think. You got to think today. Who is the they that she's talking about? Talking about you and me, brother. She's saying that we, the, all of us as black men, that's what we interested in. Arping and violating. Right? Not a, a qualifier by saying, see, the people that think like them are these particular type of black men that think this way. They are, there's no qualifier. This is what I was talking about when I did a video earlier on the divesters. But the cold part about it is y'all picking these dudes. A dude like Charleston ain't probably, he ain't probably having no trouble getting no women around him, particularly black women. Ain't got no trouble getting them to be up under him. <laughs> right? While good dudes go to bed, uh, you know, alone. And they're going to bed alone, not because they, they got to go to bed alone, but because they got a standard by which they want a woman. If they're going to have a woman in their life, they got a standard by which they want the woman to be not only the beauty appearance, but also her, her, her upper understanding. Right? Some of these women are like this sister here. I got a degree. I've been in the army. I've been in the college. So therefore, I'm smarter than the average nigga. Right? Maybe so. What man wants to be with somebody like that? <laughs> uh, looking at her, she got a little bit of a lesbian vibe going, I would say. Definitely. In my opinion. And I, I don't mean that as an insult. I mean that as that's just what I see. That's the energy that I see going on. So I could see her having uh, a, a perspective that's not very clear on men as it looks like she hasn't dealt with men a lot in a sexual sense based on her movements. But anyway, let's get back to it, man. Charleston says, man, hey, arping white women is a-okay. Right? That's okay. Now he's saying you shouldn't arp black women, but he threatened himself to arp Two black little black girls, prepubescent black girls. Right? He not only threatened to arp them, he wished that they, he was hoping that their uncles or some male in their life would molest them. Am I lying? Go back in my catalog and find it. You'll find him saying it out of his own mouth. So which one is it? Which one is it? Now you saying, oh, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want black women to get raped. Oh, really? What about when you was threatening to arp those little black girls? See, you all over the road, Charleston. I don't know why anybody would listen to anything you say. Why are people paying you all this money to come on here? I guess because you, they know you're gonna say a bunch of stupid stuff. But why? Who? I mean, you have no credibility. You all over the road. We can't hold you down to no position because you'll switch and say, ah, oh, I didn't mean that. I was lying. I was lying the last time, not this time. Oh, I was lying this time, not the last time. I mean, you you all over the road. Anyway, let's get back to uh, Switch of Charleston, our favorite character, and the, uh, the sister is about to, she's about to unleash the pit bulls on him. And so all they want is to nah, hear. Nah, nigga ain't gonna rape no white yeah, bitch. They yeah. scared to rape a white. No, nah, they gonna rape everybody because you know what? Big mouth out there. I don't know if anybody know what happened in Somalia, right? They gave them soldiers cot. They wanted to. They wanted to take over some land 
and, 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 and destroy another territory. They took those men, they gave them cot to chew, put it in their mouth, drove their sex urges up and told them this is what you do to be a real man. Baby, when they, when they got their testosterone up, baby, they went and raped kids, dogs, men, women, and it was so bad over there. So I'm telling you, these men, that's what they want. Now nah, they ain't gonna that's rape no they white bitch. They may yeah, fuck they on a little girl. They ain't, nigga, one thing I know about these niggas in America, they ain't finna do nothing to no white person, especially not no white bitch. These niggas is too scared of white folk. No, no, they'll do everything in the black community. And I'm saying, okay, nigga, if y'all want to do this, let's go across the railroad tracks and do it. Let's make some songs talking about rape. If y'all want to do it, why why would you sanction ARPIN? That is a violation of a person, human rights. Why would you sanction that? Why would you say, well, if you go ARP, then let's do it here. ARPIN is ARPIN. Right? There ain't no distinction but from color. That's the, 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 arpin is arpin. But see, this is how squiggly, squiggly brain people, they think like this, right? Right? <laughs> right? People, masses of, masses of evil think like this. There's always a back door out of whatever they said. They don't stand on it. They, there's always a back door out of it. Right? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the reason why them law books are so thick is because there's so many lies going back and forth in between them. He said, my books are thin because I ain't lying. I don't have to go back and forth crossing this lie and making sure that lie covers that lie. I don't have to do that. Anyway, we're dealing with uh, our favorite character, Charleston White, and he's telling the women on this panel that it's okay to ARP white women, just not black women, even though he threatened to ARP two little prepubescent black girls not even two months ago, I don't believe. I don't know, man. I mean, it's hard to... It's, you got to have your head on the swivel with this dude, right? <laughs> All right, let's continue. The white bitch. Y'all got song talking about putting the molly in the girl drink. So let's make us some song talking about killing white babies. Y'all got song talking about killing our babies smoking on Tuca. Let's smoke on some white babies. They let's smoke it. on some white. Yeah, let's say fuck. Yeah, so I'm with that shit because I understand uh, we are a nation of people, not a race of people. Uh, I don't give a fuck about the race. I care about my kind that's within the nation. Uh, I know there was a faction of the Black Panther Party. Them niggas went out and became serial rapists. Uh, raping and fucking and talking. killing yeah. is just part of the man's nature. Oh. <sighs> Did you hear what he just said? He said that some of the Black Panthers came out and they, that like, he made it like it was part of their, um, part of their uh, dogma to go out and be serial rapists. I don't know. We, see, just a lot of claims that are just unmerited claims. I guess you could say, hey, look, I've been to space, right? Who's going, who's, who can deny it? Who can say, you know, unless you find some paperwork to prove that I didn't, I can say whatever I want to say, right? That's, I guess that's what Charleston got to the point where he can just say whatever, right? Yeah, Black Panthers was out there raping people, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Boo, if it wasn't for the Black Panthers, schools wouldn't even be serving breakfast now. They wouldn't be serving lunch to these kids. They wouldn't serve an after school snack to these kids. The Black Panthers are the one that Martin Luther King went to Lyndon Johnson and said, This is what they're doing for these kids, and they doing it off donations. You got the money to feed these kids and you ain't doing it. That's why they're doing so bad in school. Some of them are in real bad situations. They ain't eating before they go to school. They ain't eating while they're in school. And they ain't eating after they come home from school. How you expect them to be able to concentrate on their studies? He's the one that put the pressure on Lyndon Johnson to spend money in the schools on a breakfast program, on a lunch program. And who and who inspired that? The Black Panthers. The Black Panthers figured out 
these kids are doing bad in school, not because they're stupid, but because they're hungry. They can't focus. Their stomachs is growling in the classroom. So let's feed them before they go to school. So the Black Panther set up a breakfast program for the kids. Now, I'm just saying facts. I don't know what Charleston White is talking about, but I'm talking about facts. This is a, these are facts. Martin Luther King went to Lyndon Johnson and said, if the Black Panthers can do this with the little bit of donations they're doing. What could you do with, with all the money of the, the U.S. Treasury at your disposal? Anyway, <laughs> whoo. I know Charleston's a tough listen, man, but we got to get we got to get through this. I'm gonna have to cut this up into probably two or three parts.